Hey everyone. So let me know what you'd like to see in some uh, fall um, themed Facebook lives. Cause we're going to start, I, we keep saying this and we need to really stick to a schedule, but we're going to be doing, you know, one Facebook live a week. Um, so last week we had our super fun swirling um, Facebook live sponsored by Brambleberry with that awesome kit uh, that they put together. And I know a lot of people got that kit. It was such a great value, such a great deal. So vegan, please. Hey, Donna and Maria, all our recipes are vegan and they are palm oil free because that's just how we roll. Although sometimes we'll do some lard or tallow, but basically we're all um, vegan. Milk. Yeah, sometimes we'll do goat milk. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah, so let us know what like fall themed soaps you'd like to um, see us make on a Facebook Live and we'll knock those out. Yeah, and the reason you mentioned it earlier, but the reason mm -hmm. that we're doing uh, a fall themed soap now is because now's the time to do it. We always look at things from a business point of view and especially, you know, products based business. You know, um, think about a company like, I don't know, like Yankee Candle. Yankee Candle probably has in all of their stores, they probably already have all of their fall candles ready to go. They're probably in the back right now, but they're probably they going to be, be out. or they might be <laughs> out. Yeah. If they're not out now, they might be uh, soon to be released out on the floor. So they're thinking in advance and I can guarantee you a company like that probably had that plan in play. Like in January, they knew that their fall product line will come out in mid to late August, it will hit the floor by September or whatever. So you really got to start thinking about this now because uh, Halloween, we're going to do a Frankenstein soap tonight. It's going to be upon us. Halloween's going to be upon us like that. Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready, if you don't have at least three to four weeks to actually sell it, let alone make it with the cure time, but then actually have the, the time to sell it, yeah. you're going to be left with post Halloween or post whatever holiday, all your stuff, and then you have to clearance it out and you lose money. So that's the whole point. Cause it's like, it feels summery outside. It's late summer and we're doing a Frankenstein soap, but you really got to start thinking in advance. Well, well, well in advance in uh, product retail. Yeah. And if you've never made like Halloween soaps for your product line to feature on Halloween, you should definitely do it because people that love Halloween love Halloween and will buy anything Very true. Halloween ish. So it's a great idea to do. Um, so we've had a couple questions um, as we've been sitting here. So someone asked about a basic soap making um, tutorial. If you go to lovinsoap.com slash make soap, you can download our free basic soap making ebook. It's a super detailed ebook. I think it's 50 something pages. You can print it out, um, but it goes step by step through the process. So L O V I N soap.com slash make soap. It's an ebook you can download. I also really recommend um, SoapQueen.tv. She has a series of um, video tutorials for basic soap making. So for those that are new, um, those are two really good resources. Um, someone mentioned they wanted to see some salt bar Facebook lives. Um, we will definitely do a fall themed salt bar Facebook live because I love pumpkin uh, salt soap. I have a recipe on my blog. But if you hit the video tab in our Facebook group, there are two salt bar Facebook lives. Um, one of them we did just a basic salt bar. The other one we did a um, really pretty gemstone salt bar. So you can uh, check those out because it has a lot of information about like how to formulate a salt bar and of course how to make it. And so lots of really good information there. But we will do something this fall because like I said, I do love um, a good fall themed salt bar. So we'll do that for sure. So I'm seeing beer soap. That's a great idea. Yep. Yeah, let me just scroll down here. So beer soap, salt bars. Pumpkin soap. Pumpkin soap, of course. Yep. Oh, you made Frank's. Oh, awesome. You're going to make Frank's Bride. That's great. So beer, pumpkin soap, um, kids Halloween soaps. Yeah, we can yep. come up with some ideas for that. Internet is so slow. Uh oh. All right. So let me, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we are actually um, using a recipe from my recipe book, Love and Soap Studio recipe book. You can find it on my blog and I'll post links after we're done to everything that we talked about. But it is the triple butter bar recipe. And so it has just that in it. It has triple butter. So it has um, shea butter, cocoa butter, and mango butter. And then of course, coconut oil and olive oil. And it makes a really nice bar of soap. Um, and it works really good for this design. 
And then we're using an essential oil blend. Do you want to tell us about that? Uh, yeah, it's uh, essential oil blend. We'll go through this. Well, yeah, we should write this down, right, in the comments as well. Yeah, we can Just do that, it definitely. Uh, yeah. It's a, a blend from my new book, The uh, Essential Oil Blend for Men. And it's called Sitting Bull. <laughs> and it's uh, tangerine, juniper berry, lavender, rosemary, tea tree, and Roman chamomile. So it's a pretty complex one, and it's incredibly exotic, and it's, it I say amazing. this about all of them, but this is one of my favorites. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do for, for the essential oil blend. They're like your children. They're all your favorites. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you can get his book on Amazon.com, and it comes printed, because I know we have a lot of people that like printed books. Also today, Benjamin published a blog post at loveandsip.com all about beard oil. So, um... November is no sh no, no shave, shave November. November, and so if you want to market to um, men uh, and add that to your product line, it's a really helpful blog post that tells you how to formulate, talks about carrier oils, um, essential oils, packaging, yep. pretty much everything you need to know about beard oil. So go check out that, and again, it's just loveandstep.com slash blog. And it's just a nice little resource if you're wanting to add that to your product line. Because I think it's great for fall. Men are growing out the beards. Um, so it's a good product to add. Yep. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's do this. All right. So this is going to be, I think, pretty quick tonight. Um, not going to take too long. So let's just go ahead and get started. Give your black. Oh. Yep, I have my black. So first of all, we're going to turn you around. So give us just a second. There's going to be a... So if you guys have questions, uh, now that I can see the see the words, um, ask away, and I will either answer them or, or post the question to Amanda, and we'll get everything knocked out. And if we don't get to yours, uh, we will, after the live, um, we'll go through the comments and, and knock it out. All right. Okay, so let's go over what we're using today. Let me grab a drink of water. So hopefully you saw the image that I posted with the Facebook Live notice of the Frankenstein soap um, because you do have to have kind of an idea of what we're going for so that you can pick your colors and you can cut your cardboard. Okay, so Frankenstein, well it's Frankenstein's monster, right? So the monster, he is green and black. And so we're using charcoal. And I can't even remember where I got this, but Mad Oils has um, a couple nice charcoals for soap making. Brambleberry has charcoal. Wholesale Supplies Plus. Most soap suppliers sell a charcoal, but you definitely want a charcoal that's, you know, to be used in cosmetics. So bamboo charcoal, hardwood charcoal is common. You don't want to just go get charcoal and grind it down yourself. Okay, so get something for cosmetics. Um, and then for the green, we're using Kelly Green from Brambleberry. And... I'm basically using this. It's the only green I have right now. I was looking through my, my micas and I have this and I have, um, oh, I can't remember. It's from Mad Oils. It's like a light green. So that won't really work. We need a nice saturated dark green. So Kelly Green from Rumbleberry works good. I do have to warn you though, it turns a funky color in the soap until about 24 hours, <clears throat> excuse me, later. And then it's like the perfect Frankenstein monster green, okay? So don't freak out if you use it. It turns like an olive green almost. Um, but then after 24 hours, it reacts to the pH and turns a nice green. So those are going to be our colorants. Um, now I've already measured everything into my bowl. So in here, I have my coconut oil, my olive oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, um, I have my essential oil blend, which Benjamin told you about, so that everything is all ready to go. And we have to do one more thing. Oh, I've already made my live solution, so it's here. And I'll let you know the temperatures as soon as we're ready to make soap. But we have to do one thing to prepare. We need to make a little scraping tool because we'll actually use this to scrape the top of the hairline and that's how we get the hairline um, in the Frankenstein soap and so it's super easy to do just take a piece of cardboard and cut it the width of your mold and I'm using the tall mold because I just think 
I don't know. I just think it looks better in the tall skinny mold. But I saw some people make the Frankenstein soap in a regular um, 10 inch loaf mold, just a regular loaf mold, and it still looks really good. So whichever mold you use is perfectly fine. Okay, so all I'm doing here is cutting it the width of the mold. And you don't have to be perfect with it, just kind of And just kind of eyeball it. If you want to be super accurate and measure it, you can. But basically, you're wanting the piece of cardboard to fit down into the mold and to be able to scrape the soap. Okay? So once you get that, you have to cut the hairline. And you can do this however you can have like big pieces of hair, you can have really tight small ones. Um, completely up to you. I like the big ones. Yeah, and I think it scrapes easier if you do the big ones, so. All right, so there's my hairline. Um, so this will actually be, you know, black soap once we scrape out the green. And that might not make sense right now, but as I go along and do the tutorial, it'll definitely makes sense. So that's the tool you need and that's super easy I think. Um, so you don't need anything too complicated for this. So just make sure you have that ready to go. And now we're going to mix up our soap. So for this recipe we're going to be layering soap. Um, so we want the first layer to be a thick trace and then the top layer to be more fluid so that when we pour it over it pours easily into the hairline. And again, that might not make sense, but I'll definitely show you, walk you through the process. Okay, so let me get my goggles on here. <clears throat> and let's see where we're at. All right, so our oils are 95 degrees, and we're Fahrenheit here. Tell everybody where you got the thermometer. Oh, this is from Brambleberry. It was in that swirling kit. So if you guys uh, didn't catch the Facebook Live from last week, we... Uh, Brimbleberry sponsored a uh, sponsored the Facebook Live and gave us one of their brand new uh, soap making kits, where it has everything you'll ever need to make soap. Literally everything except water. And I'm talking about all the tools, all the equipment, the heat gun, everything. And so it was a really fun. And then it came with like a little tutorial on how to swirl a batch. It was really really cool. Yeah, I'm still blown away by everything that was in there. But anyway, that's where we got the. Yeah. And I really like it. It's a good size. All right, so our um, lye solution is 95. So we're both around 95. I would say for this recipe, you want to keep it under 100. Um, if you soak too much hotter, you know, it might move too quickly where you don't have time to do the design. So just stay kind of low, but you don't have to be, you know, as low as like a swirling recipe. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring this to a very light trace. And again, I've got everything in here. I already added my scent. I know some soap makers add their scent at this point. Some people add it to trace. It's just a matter of preference. Um, I've already added mine, okay? The essential oil blend itself is a pretty slow mover. So when you do something like this that can possibly be finicky with the using the tool and separating it, separating it out into two different colors and all that, uh, be really cognizant of the fragrances that you're going to use for this because you really don't want to accelerate trace any more than you have to. Right. So the essential oil blend that we have, it's pretty complex. It's tangerine, juniper berry, lavender, rosemary, tea tree, and Roman chamomile. But none of those really move that fast, so I think this is going to work out really well. And this is, again, from the swirling kit. It's a really nice stick blender. Okay, so we're just looking for a, a nice light trace, and then we'll thicken it up a little more to swirl it. it smells so good. Ashley Westbrook says uh, she's been using Hermit from Brambleberry. Have you ever used that? I have, yeah. Oh, that, that's another one I had. It was kind of light, though. I think it has white in it, so it kind of lightens it, but that's a really nice one. 
Joan asks, what about a recipe using pumpkin oil? Oh, that'd be fun to do. We did that one year, didn't we? I and thought we did. We added just a pretty small amount to the yeah. overall base oil recipe. Um, probably not even 5%. Yeah. And it was black. It was, I think it was unrefined pumpkin. Yeah, it's almost a really dark green. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that would be a really good label appeal for any fall soap, or winter soap for that matter. Yeah. All right, so this is just a nice light trace, okay? Um, just barely trace. I don't know if you can even see, um, but just super light. And that's perfect where we want it. All right, so now we're going to pour out about a quarter of the batch. And that is going to make the black hair. So three quarters is going to be the green for the body or the face. And then one quarter is going to be black for the hair. Now I'm just going to eyeball it. But again, if you're doing this like for your business and you're going to repeat it over and over, then you might want to weigh it so that the next batch you make is similar. Um, but we're just going to eyeball it. And I'm going to shoot for, like I said, about a quarter. I have no idea if that is a quarter, but we'll go with it. Um, okay. Do you think that's about a quarter? I think a little tiny bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Look good. Paulette, do you have to be in a ventilated area when making soap? That is definitely recommended, especially when you uh, create your life solution. Yeah. And yeah, we're in a big uh, loft downtown with really high ceilings and has ventilation and stuff so we're we're good here but yeah that's that's definitely recommended yep definitely because the the lye does fume when you mix it and so you want to be really careful about that all right so we're going to add some kelly green and i want this super saturated so i'm going to add uh let's add a teaspoon this is a quarter teaspoon it's almost all of my Kelly Green there. Let's mix it up and see what it looks like. And then if we need to add more, we can add some more. Now, when I mix in micas, I don't always pre-mix because micas mix in pretty easily to soap. Um, some people pre-mix them, you know, with an oil or with glycerin. And you certainly can do that. Um, I just feel like it's kind of an unnecessary step, especially if you're using a stick blender to bring it to a thicker trace. So just put your stick blender right over that mica, push it down, and then start mixing. That's pretty nice, but I'm going to add a little more because I want it a little more saturated. But that wouldn't be bad if I left it like that. And like I said, this Kelly Green from Brambleberry, it does morph a little bit, but then it turns back to green. So you can already see it kind of start changing. So let's call it a teaspoon and a half of the Kelly Green total. You can already see it's turning that murky kind of olive green, but I know tomorrow when I show you guys, it's going to be a nice bright green. Alright, so now that we've added our color, we're just going to bring this to a thick trace. So right now we're at just a light trace. You can just see it starting to trace. Um, but we want this to be thick because we want to be able to sculpt it with the cardboard so that it holds the black layer on top without the black layer um, pushing through it, okay? the pH, I guess. I'm not real sure. I'm not sure if it's a certain dye in it that reacts or what, but it does turn back a beautiful green the next day. So definitely use your favorite green mica. Like I said, this is just the only one I had at the time, um, but there's some great green micas out there. Where'd you get this bowl? Uh, this is a Rubbermaid bowl, so it's just 
like Target, Walmart. Yep, Target, Walmart. Uh, So Benjamin, what's your favorite Halloween candy? All of them. All of them. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think milk duds for me. They come in the little boxes. Those are my favorite. Pretty good. All right. The glass bowl. I think you can, the, it's a uh, Pyrex pitcher. I think you can get it at the same place as Walmart or Target. Yeah. Um, this one actually came, though, from Brambleberry. Uh, speaking of the Brambleberry kit that we showcased last week, this actually comes with it. I know you guys probably think I work for Brambleberry secretly, but I really don't. They're just a great company. They're very supportive of us. They're supportive of our nonprofit. They publish so much great content for soap makers. I just love those guys. All right, so this is at probably a medium trace, but if I quit mixing it, it will actually thicken up. So we're gonna go ahead and pour it into the mold. I, well, I'll leave it here for just a minute, but it should thicken up nicely. So there is a little wait time in this. You know, we do need this to get pretty thick. This is gonna stay nice and fluid, as you can see. Um, big difference uh, between this one, but we want this one to stay nice and fluid because we want it to pour over this one and fill all of the hair gaps that we'll create. So we'll just let this sit for a minute. So there's a lot of questions about these bowls. Oh, um, really? Uh, so that guy, I don't exactly know the brand. All I do know is that we, we get the sweater from Brambleberry in yeah. their kit last week. But I'm sure it's either like the Pampered Chef or Yeah, rubber Pyrex. Um, Pyrex makes just the big glass <clears throat> mixing bowls. So you can get those. They're really nice to work with, especially for batches this size. Yeah. All right. The, is the green causing it to thicken? No, the green isn't, it's the mixing. So I'm just mixing, 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 and that's gonna cause it. And I think I'm gonna mix some more because we need it really thick. Sometimes, I mean, if I let it sit, it'll thicken. So if you're at home and you have time, just let it sit and it will thicken. But I'm gonna try and mix it some more to get it thicker. And we might just have to um, have some small talk and some chat here while we wait. So Don Maria is asking, Will we be adding a puree of like pumpkin or carrot or cucumber? We're not in this recipe, although uh, pumpkin puree soap is fantastic. Maybe we could do one of those. Yeah, we're not adding anything to this, but a Frank a green Frankenstein soap. You could add like a cucumber puree. What else could you add? Green aloe. You can make a Frankenstein yeah. aloe soap. I think we need to do for this. Yeah. We have that big old aloe we need to harvest a little. So this might be a good design, you know, if you have a um, fragrance oil or essential oil that thickens soap up, this would be actually good to use it in because you want it to get thick. We don't mix lye solution and glass. Uh, notice the lye solution was in this guy here and it's plastic. Yeah. We we uh, feel free to make soap and glass. 
that's what we do. Uh, we encourage you to use your own sensibilities about it, but we don't uh, we don't mix the lye solution with glass, but we do make soap yeah. in glass. And actually, most of the time, I make soap in these plastic pitchers, too. I just happen to have this container. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely no glass with the lye solution. I know a lot of people do it, and they haven't had anything happen, but it can shatter on you, so I don't recommend it. All right, so this is... So how is, much um, of yeah. the actual essential oil is in here, ounces-wise? Uh, we did about 30 grams total. 30 grams, yeah. so about an ounce. Yeah. Okay, and that that is about 0.5 ounces per pound. So this is a two-pound um, oil recipe. So we'll go ahead and pour this into our mold, and you can see how thick it is. Now, we need it to get thicker before we can rake it, but it's going to start thickening in the mold, so we don't have to keep blending it or anything. What is the total weight of this recipe? I have no idea. We'll give you the recipe, though. Yeah. It's 32, um, 32 ounces, 900 grams total of oil plus lye and water. So I can add everything up for you if you want, but. I'm already making a mess. So this green color, it's looking a little murky green, um, but you guys are gonna be shocked tomorrow um, at how it changes. So don't judge it just yet because we want that perfect, like true green color. Although, you know, I think this color would work too for Frankenstein. I mean, he's kind of a, a murky character in he, so, but it does uh, get much brighter. All right. Every last bit in the mold here. Asha, I'm not sure what the actual specific dimensions of the mold are, uh, but they are available on Brambleberry. It's are they called tall and skinny? Yep, they're 12 inch tall and skinny silicone molds. Yeah. Um, but lots of suppliers, I think, are doing this tall and skinny. I think Nurture Soap, Wholesale Supplies Plus. So kind of check out your favorite suppliers and see if they have it. All right. So basically, we want to let this sit for a minute and let it get thicker so that we can rake it. So we'll just wait a minute. If you guys have any questions so far, just let me know. And I want you to look at how still fluid this is. It's just nice and fluid because, again, we want to be able to spoon it over this, um, over the bottom green layer and have it support it. So we don't want to thicken this up. Otherwise, we'd, we'd be glopping it. So keep this one nice and fluid. Okay. Any questions, just keep asking, but we're going to have to pause for just a minute while it thickens up. So if any of you who are on here have purchased the Essential Oil Blends for Men book, uh, let me know. Give me a comment on here and let me know if you've actually made anything yet or if you're just kind of perusing through them still and figuring it out. Uh, and if you have made something, tell me if you like it or not. Yeah. Essential oil blends are so incredibly subjective to the person making them. So they really are. Not um, and speaking to that, you know, not every essential oil blend in that book is necessarily one I would put on my face or anything, you know, in, a, in an application product application, and then put it on my face like in a beard oil or something because I don't particularly like it. But I do know that they sell really well, so someone likes it. So. It's really interesting, the subjectivity of, of fragrance blending. I think it was funny, too, how um, <clears throat> someone posted today, They they um, we were talking about beard oil, and they mentioned that they made a beard oil, but they had a bunch of women buying it as hair oil. Yeah. And you had that with yeah, your company, absolutely. right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially women with, uh, what is it called, pixie cuts? Yeah, pixie cuts, they get the balm and use it like a palm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is getting pretty thick. I think we'll go ahead and uh, turn this black and then we'll test that. So we're using charcoal. You can use black oxide too um, or a black mica. My favorite black colorant is just charcoal. It's just easy to work with. Um, when you use it at super saturated amounts to turn the soap black, it doesn't like rub off black on a washcloth like black oxide does. And so it's just a simple preference. Um, I really like it. So we're going to start with um, a teaspoon of charcoal because we want this to be jet black. 
And just like with the green, I'm just going to use my stick blender to push that down. And with charcoal, what you see is what you typically get. So if you add charcoal to your mixture and it's not black enough, just simply add a little more. A lot of people post, I soak with charcoal and it turned gray. Well, it's just because you need more charcoal. Okay, so just add it until you get it saturated um, to where you want it. So that to me is too gray. We're going to go a little more. Unless you're going for gray soap, you know, which you can certainly do. So we added a teaspoon, right? Let's try another half a teaspoon. Is this uh, activated bamboo charcoal? Uh huh. Yeah. And again, most suppliers sell really good charcoal. Um, Brambleberry, Wholesome Supplies Plus, Mad Oils has a couple different ones, I believe. So just get it saturated to where you want it. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to stick with that. Now, I don't want to stick blend it too much because, again, I want it to remain fluid so that it fills in our base. Okay, so just stick blend it until it's mixed and no more. Make sure it's all mixed up, though. Does that look black enough? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, so now for the fun part, we're going to rake his hair. So let me grab um, a little mold because we might have some that we need to pull off of it, which I'll show you. So two seconds. Beth, uh, I'm not sure if this swirling kit is still on sale. If, uh, oh, you... that was the regular price. Oh, the 130? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the 130 is the is the price. And it has free shipping. With free shipping. Which I didn't realize at first. All right, so now we're gonna rake the hair and the soap is pretty thick. So it should, when you rake it, it should hold its shape. If you rake it and then it just suddenly falls back flat, then you need to let it sit longer. It's not ready. So basically, and I do a couple passes. Okay, I start with just putting it kind of halfway down um, to start pulling the soap out. But then you can push it back, you know, down on another pass. So you'll find what works for you. And so you do have a little that you have to pull out. Um, so I just put that in a little mold and I'll roll it into balls for embeds. So if you feel like you need to make another pass, just make another pass. Until you just get it how you want it. All right, so hopefully those will be peaky enough. Let me look. There we go. Okay. All right, so we've got a little soap that we had to take out, but that's okay. We'll just use it, you know, for embeds or something. Ray, uh, Ray's asking, uh, isn't black mica easier to work with than using charcoal? The reason we use charcoal is... Uh, it's really just a preference thing, but moreover than anything, uh, it doesn't leave uh, black bubbles or if you use a wash rag, uh, the black doesn't come off like it does with black oxide. Yeah. So or, it's really just a preference thing. Yeah, or black mica. Black mica, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, some black micas are okay, but a lot of times they have mostly um, black oxide in them and so they still do that lather black thing. So again, it's just a preference thing. I just really like um, the charcoal. Okay. All right, so now we're just gonna simply spoon on the black. And as you can see, the green is nice and solid, so it's gonna easily support the black hair. Even still, I don't wanna pour it just in case it pushes any down. So just spoon it on, and I'll pour it in just a minute, but let me get a little bit on here. Now I can also pour on my spatula, which is what I should be doing. And that just helps kind of break the fall of the soap so that it doesn't push down that bottom layer. But it, again, it is pretty thick, so I don't think we're going to have any problems. So just add all of your black on top, and that is pretty much it. I think this is a really easy design to do. The hardest part is just waiting for it to get thick enough, but just mix, mix, mix. 
if you soak, um, you know, at hotter temperatures, it'll certainly thicken up faster. But then I always worry about this second layer. I don't want that to thicken up too much. So I would worry about, you know, using hotter temperatures. But you could certainly try it. I almost think I should have added more black, but I don't know. I think it'll look good. All right. So scrape it all out. And that is pretty much it. Um, I'm going to spray it with alcohol in just a little bit so that it doesn't get ash on it. Um, but this is going to give us that design in the picture that I posted for the Facebook Live. It's going to be green on the bottom and then have a hairline and then the black hair. So it's a really simple and fun recipe to make um, for Halloween. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, just simply post in the comments. We'll answer them. I'll also post the uh, recipe, the essential oil blend, and some of the links to some of the things that we talked about tonight. So that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you came late, you could just watch uh, the replay from the beginning and get um, the whole tutorial. So have a good night, guys. See ya. Bye.